Hello, I'm Graham Jones and welcome to Channel KT4 Broadcasting Live on Facebook and YouTube. You can join in by sending in questions during the show. Just press the comments button on the screen. Don't forget to click the like or share buttons. If you're watching on YouTube, please click uh, to subscribe to Channel KT4. It's free! So I'm so pleased to welcome to my virtual studio, uh, Sarah Jewing, founder and chair of the Emily Davison Memorial Project. Hello, Sarah, and welcome. And thank you very much for joining me here on uh, channel KT4. Thank you, Graham. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, it's it's my pleasure. And uh, I'm really inter interested in the, this wonderful uh, memorial that you've you've put together. And, uh, and it's going to be actually unveiled uh, in about a week's time, isn't it? That's right. That's right. A week today. A week today. So, Sarah, could you tell me and our viewers a little about the idea for this wonderful statue for Emily uh, Davison uh, and how it came about and how long you've been planning this? Okay. Well, um, the idea for having some kind of a memorial for Emily uh, actually came about uh, in 2013. It was the centenary of her death at the race course. Um, and I have always had a fascination with the suffragette movement. And I moved to Epsom back in early 1990s and um, had heard this story about this suffragette, but didn't know much about her. But then I heard that the council were planning some events for her centenary. And I happened to know one of the councillors at the time. And I said, oh, you know, what's going on? So he invited me to go uh, and to a committee meeting to discuss what they wanted to do. So I did get involved. And um, as an artist myself, it just came to me, why don't we have a memorial, some kind of a memorial to Emily? Um, so the original project was actually going to be on the downs and it was going to be very ambitious a big conceptual piece and uh unfortunately due to various reasons um it didn't didn't happen so it sort of got shelved it was always something that i i kind of thought i'd like to come back to because it was a bit like unfinished business for me um because I'd done so much research on her and I've become so fascinated with her as a person and her life. Um, anyway, in 2018, I was approached by Paul Taylor from What's On In Epsom um, one evening at a, at a function. And he said, um, why don't we you start, when are you gonna start this statue uh, project again? Because that was, 2018 was the centenary of women, some women getting the vote. So I kind of thought, well, I'm going to have to have to start it up again. Um, but this time we wanted to do it a little bit differently. And we decided to um, go for a, a, a more traditional uh, bronze statue in the marketplace. Um, I had an artist in mind because she had contacted me the first time around um, and said she was really interested in doing something for Emily because she was really passionate about her as well um, but a bronze a representational bronze statue wasn't sort of what we were looking for back then but I thought it would be perfect for the marketplace um, and the council were actually uh, in planning stages of redeveloping the marketplace so they were really interested in it um, because you know they wanted they wanted the, the the space to be you know really exciting and 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 this this a memorial statue would would sort of fit right in so uh that's kind of how how it came about yeah it was just kind of a it was it was a it was an idea that i had that then just became a bit of an obsession i suppose yeah okay so you, you said you're you're an you're an artist i mean what what type of artist are you um, well, I was I, I am also a psychologist, but when as a I went back to art school uh, as a mature student, had to kind of a change of direction, um, and uh, I well I do three dimensional sculptural work and a bit of photography, um, but um, since then I've actually been more involved in art uh, projects like community art projects. So I've much more become like an arts uh, creative arts project manager, really. So my own work has kind of had to take a bit of a back seat over the last few years. Okay, so I'm going to call you a psychological artist. Does that work? <laughs> <laughs> something, something like that. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, anyway I'm, I'm sure I think everybody's heard of Emily Davison, but just what is the story of the Derby? I'm going to put it, I've got a little um, 
picture I'm going to put up. And if could you explain? Uh, I'm sure uh, everything about Emily inspired you. You've just said that to uh, mm -hmm. to get on with this project. But just just give us a little bit of detail. Here's the picture for you as you as you talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, well, obviously, there's a lot of backstory that leads up to this this incident here, um, and and how and why she was there. And there's also a lot of controversy, or there there was a lot of controversy back in in the day. Uh, you know, soon after that it happened, and also for many years after. Um, I got to learn a lot more about her uh, through being involved with the um, uh, Emily Inspires in Morpeth, Northumberland, because they wanted to have a statue themselves up in the, up in uh, Morpeth. Um, and there was a genealogist there, her name is Maureen Howes, who was interviewing a lot of, she has a very big family because she's one of nine children. Um, and so there's a lot of family up there as well as in France and Australia and um, I think in Canada as well. Um, and uh, so I learned a lot from from reading her book where for the first time the family were interviewed because they'd always kept quiet because because she was such a controversial figure. But they wanted to set the record straight. So when this event happened, she was part of the WSPU, which is the Women's Social and Political Union, um, and had been been a member for quite um, some years. Uh, she she grew up actually she was born in Blackheath. Um, uh, to a fairly um, well-off middle-class family. Um, she was very bright. She went to, um, she enrolled at, um, at university um, and uh, want, wanted to have an, an academic career, but unfortunately her father died. And back then, uh, you know, it basically meant she had to drop out of school and get a job to survive. Um, her mum moved up to uh, Morton near Morpeth and opened a bakery and Emily stayed went and became a governess and and uh, a teacher but became interested in the women's social and political union she she had she was a passionate passionate about social justice um and uh i think particularly because she personally had experienced barriers to her, you know her, her career um by not being able to graduate and um so she became involved as a volunteer with the the wspu and became over the the few years before the incident in 1913 became quite prominent. Um, she was arrested seven times, jailed seven times. Um, and obviously she went through what a lot of the suffragettes who were jailed did. They when they went, they went on um, hunger strike because they wanted to be treated like political prisoners, not as just ordinary felons. Um, and when they were denied that, they uh, used um, denying food as a, as a way to try and get their their way so she was actually force fed 49 times um and uh you know she suffered a lot but she was so courageous and so determined and very intelligent um uh she she wasn't going to give up the fight um and uh so uh, she went and hid in the Houses of Parliament, for example, on Census Day, so she could put her name down as, as belonging in the Houses of Parliament. And this is a time when women were barred from a lot of political meetings and, and obviously they had no rights. Um, so uh, she was, you know, she, some of the things she did were, were, were quite clever in a way. Um, so she... Yeah, she was a passionate member of the WSPU. Um, she was quite feisty northerner. Um, and, uh, you know, she uh, then decided to go to the Derby. Um, and uh, for whatever reason, there are various theories as to why she did what she did. But uh, the one that, that seems to be most plausible now is that she wanted to petition the king because the king was there. There were film cameras there. This was a new technology at the time. And so she knew that it would be broadcast far and wide. Um, and uh, it obviously went tragically wrong. Um, and four days later, after being knocked down by the horse, she died at the cottage hospital on Alexandra Road in Epsom. Yeah, I remember so I had a look when I was doing the research for this particular show, uh, Sarah. I, I saw the uh, there's a memorial plaque, isn't there, for, That's uh, right. for the cottage hospital from where she died. I saw that. We're getting a couple of comments coming in, uh, Sarah, so I just want to share them with you. And uh, I don't know whether you know this person, but let's have a look, see, what we, see if we can... How my technology is going here again, Sarah? Uh, we go. Oh, there we go. Hello from New Zealand. Good to see you all. 
I don't know whether you know Grant Warner, but Grant, thank you very much for saying hello. Thank you for watching the show. Yeah. It's good. And uh, one slightly closer to home, uh, this is Steve McCormack saying, afternoon, Graham. Good afternoon, Steve. Steve is the um, uh, newly elected county uh councillor for Epsom and Ewell and he's a borough he's a borough councillor for um Epsom Downs so oh. obviously that, that the derby is on his patch so, uh, so Steve thanks for saying hello good to see you on the show well the, the next question always comes up when we're dealing with uh these sort of projects is is how do we fund it what well, we haven't there's two things I think we need to talk about um and one is kind of First of all, let me ask this. What do you think the benefits are uh, to the support and bringing it into Epsom? But I'm more interested at the moment in how have you received the support locally? And, of course, there's money involved in this uh, to, to, to put it together. You've got to fundraise and do all of that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm interested in the fundraising, but, of course, I'm also interested in the sculptor, in the artist. Mm -hmm. And I've got a little slide which maybe you could tell me a little bit about. Okay, so uh, this is myself and Christine Charlesworth, who is the artist who um, made created Emily. Uh, we're there on the downs with a quarter-sized maquette or model that she made uh, of Emily, and that is part of her her creative process is to make a smaller one so that she can kind of any issues that come up she can she can work them out on a smaller scale so when she makes the life size one obviously she's she knows what she's doing um so yeah we were up on the downs uh to take that picture um which uh paul taylor from what's on an epsom has been doing a lot of publicity uh, around the project and um so Yes, in terms of uh, Christine is, is very almost as passionate as I am about Emily. Uh, she did an incredible amount of research um, into, you know, all aspects of her in, in terms of her, her height, her waist sizes, you know, and her, her, her um, physical features and, and also the sort of person she was because she wanted to be able to express that through the, the statue. Um, we wanted to make her a three-dimensional person not just physically but also in terms of of the person that she was rather than just this mad woman who ran in front of a horse which is how she's been portrayed for many years and Christine and I were totally together on that we, we wanted to 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 put across the person um rather than just the event if you like yeah I think it's absolutely amazing and just want to uh let everybody know that that's watching we, we haven't got time on sadly on, on this particular program to show it but uh but christine she she videoed the whole process of uh of mm -hmm. making the sculpture and I, and each one lasts about i don't know about 10 minutes or so mm -hmm. and it's her talking to camera at the various stages with yeah. the resins and everything else absolutely yeah. amazing i sat there one afternoon just watching all the way through them i think to date there was seven yeah i think i think there's eight all together i think i might be wrong uh they're on our website or uh, and on our facebook page um and they are fascinating i i, I myself as an artist have never seen the process from conception to uh yeah. installation in such detail and and she she's very engaging and it's well worth a look because it is such an education into the complexity of making a statue a bronze statue and people always say oh my goodness so expensive you know bronze statues are really expensive which they are but apart from the cost of the materials the work that goes into them and the different uh, steps that you need to take um is very very involved and so it's well worth looking if you're uh, looking at if you're interested in that yeah no i think i really do recommend to everybody to go on to the facebook page and onto the website and uh, and check out those videos absolutely amazing we've got yet another comment come in and i think sarah i don't know you're attracting uh, borough councillors <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is this is um robert foot and he's saying hello graham greetings he's out fishing but he's still watching the show so uh, i hope you catch some good fish <laughs> and uh, and enjoy enjoy the show. How good is that? Now we did touch on this briefly, Sarah. But what are the benefits? Do you think the statue is going to bring to Epsom? 
I think that Epsom, um, I mean, up until recently, Epsom obviously has been, it's it's been associated with the Derby and with Epsom salts. And I think now having, uh, having a statue of Emily is just going to um, uh, enhance the heritage aspect to Epsom, hopefully in, in encourage uh, visitors to come in, to see her, um, to learn more about her and 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 what happened in Epsom. Um, also, I think given the current situation with statues and 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 trying to redress the balance of women um, who are uh, memorialised in in that form is is a really good thing for Epsom. Um, I know you know we're, Epsom Council very very proud of the fact that you know. Um, they have you know a lot of uh, female representation on their council and and um in terms of wages uh, parity and things like that so being associated with um you know the gender equality and heritage and um just having something of interest in the in the new market i mean the new marketplace looks amazing and i think having having a statue like this uh, and I should mention that it's also going to have an interactive element. So there's going to be um, people are going to be able to use their smartphones to, uh, with a QR code to actually listen to a podcast. So it's a bit like going to a museum if you want to know more about Emily and and her association with Epson, but also her life. Then you'll be able to to listen to um, her history in a lot more detail. So it will be an educational resource as well for local local people and children. I think it's absolutely amazing to get one of those sort of like visual things going together for people to have a look at. And as you said, for education purposes, it's really good. Now, a new little feature that I've managed to get going here, um, which is called it's people who are liking the uh, the show on Facebook. And there's a couple of people. And this just shows how interested people are in this, because um, one guy is Yashio Imasi. And uh, hello, Yashio. And he's in uh, Tokyo. In wow. Japan, uh, okay. We won't talk about the Olympics, right? Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got David Cooper. Not quite sure where David's from. And then we've got Martin McKenzie. Hello, Martin. And, and Martin is in the United States of America. So wow. we've had New Zealand, America, and Japan already yeah. in the last twenty minutes coming in to watch the to watch the show. Now, yeah. let's see. What do you think Emily would think about being commemorated uh, with a statue in Epsom? Um, well, I've been thinking about this. Emily was really all about the cause, not about herself. So I think I think she might struggle a bit to be kind of a uh, centre of attention in that respect. But I think if she uh, realised that, that the reason that she's there is because of, you know, the suffragette cause in, 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 in general, but also her part, her role, the role that she played and the difference today from um what life was like for women back when she was alive i mean um i think we'd all agree that, that there's still still a way to go but we have come come a long way and i think that she would want it to to symbolize that rather than actually focus on her as a person knowing what i know from what i've read and and, yeah. and having spoken to the family all right that's good so how would you say how would you put it in words about how relevant do you think uh emily is to us today sarah i think she is relevant um i think you know there are still the the issues might be different i mean women have the vote now but there are still a lot of um issues to do with uh women's rights women's equality uh in a, on a, a practical level um uh, you know, there's there's Me Too, there's um, the upskirting campaign, there's there's um, uh, you know gen, uh, pay parity, which you know there's a lot of of uh, and and obviously domestic violence. There's all these things that that um, are relevant to women, and I think that um, she was obviously a pioneer, as were a lot of suffragettes at the time. Um, you know, they they decided that the suffragists who went before them who were trying to 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 succeed um by talking to you know um mps and and doing things you know in in the right way but were ignored and they decided and they ended up having to be a, a little bit take more direct action and i think that uh for me uh emily 
symbolizes the fact that if you want anything, if you want, if you feel strongly about anything, any kind of injustice or anything in life, if you if you want it, to, you know, to make change, you have to you have to commit. You have to make some kind of sacrifice in your life. Now, I'm not I'm not suggesting that people should do anything uh, like she did, but um, uh, in, in terms of putting yourself at risk. But I think that, you know, um, in life, if if you want anything badly enough, you have to really be determined and not not be put off. And I think that's true as true now as it as it was then. I think that's uh, that's a re you've captured that extremely well, Sarah. And uh, so I really do want to sh to uh, to thank you for that. Now we've actually got a, a picture, um, and I I want you to tell us all about this because you know, cause th this is really for me. This is the money shot for the show, and uh, so let's have a look at it. There we go. Right. Yeah. So what I want you to do is, one, one, you can tell me about that particular image you, that we've got there of Emily. But also, uh, I'm interested to, to, to let my viewers know exactly where, when and what time uh, the unveiling is going to be. And I know people won't be able to necessarily get to the unveiling yeah. because of the time it's going to be. But yeah. if people know exactly where it is in Epsom Parade, I believe, and um, people can go along and, and admire uh this wonderful woman and the great sculpture that uh, that christine's put together yeah yeah um okay well first of all this is actually a maquette so it's a it's a quarter size model um and uh you can see she's sitting on quite a contemporary pale granite bench which uh we chose that because we wanted to to contrast the, the dark brass and the and the, the light granite and also to contrast the traditional form of brass, a bronze, and um, and the contemporary design of the bench. So, uh, you know, to symbolize the fact that what she, the, the, the issue of gender equality is still current today. So it's, 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 it's sort of that continuation. She's holding a census form, which obviously relates to the incident I mentioned earlier, where she, she snuck into the um, House of Parliament, so she could have her name on the census form. She's also got her seven um, badges, which the suffragettes, every time they were um, imprisoned, they were given a badge. Um, she's got her WSPU badge on there. Um, she's wearing the hat that she wore at the Derby. So it's an exact replica because there are photographs of that, um, that hat. Um, she was always smartly dressed. So, you know, that, that she's smartly dressed. And you can't really see the other, on, on her left, there's actually a, three books and a mortarboard. So the three books are her favorite books. And then the mortarboard uh, represents her, um, she actually did two degrees. She completed two degrees, even though she wasn't able to graduate. And she used to wear her mortarboard and her gown when she went march on, on suffragette marches. So she was very proud of the fact that she, you know, she had achieved that. So there's a lot of sort of symbolism in, in the design of the statue. Um, the life size, the actual statue is being installed as we speak in the marketplace. So it's right next to the uh, clock tower mm. and it will be unveiled next Tuesday. Um, because of COVID restrictions, we only have a small group of um, invited guests um, and we're encouraging people who want to be part of it to um, join our live stream, which uh, uh, I can uh I haven't actually got it with me, but there, it's on YouTube. So there's going to be a live streaming. So anybody anywhere in the world can watch it. It will be at uh, 11 o'clock on next Tuesday. That's really good because um, you know, I certainly want to, uh, want, to, want to watch this. So we're talking about 11 o'clock live streaming on YouTube. So I take it if we go into YouTube, then we go into the search engine. Yes, and, you should. And, and just type in Emily Davison Memorial Project. Yes. And, and you should get it coming up live. It's a bit like there are people at the moment watching this live on YouTube. So I'm, I'm also, also, there's going to be um, one thing I should mention is that University for Creative Arts very kindly agreed to get involved to create some panels. So we're going to have her surrounded by fencing just to keep her safe and so that people can't see her because we want the big reveal next week. Um, and uh, they've designed four amazing panels um, to go on these fences and they will have the live streaming link on there. So if people are in the town, they can find it there. 
that's that's good. Look, Sarah, thank you so much for joining me in my virtual studio here at Channel KT4. It's been amazing yes. to find out about yet another wonderful project here, right on our own doorstep. Yes. Uh, good luck for the unveiling next week. Thank uh, you. Again, many thanks for popping in to chat with me. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Sarah Dewing. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. It's my pleasure. Now, Sarah, you just stay there for a little while and we'll we'll chat in a, in a minute. But in the meantime, I've just got some other bits to do. Okay. Uh, once we go offline, we can have a little chat. OK, okay. So, yeah. uh, each week I give a shout out to one of our advertisers in our local magazine. This week, it's the turn of longstanding supporters of the Cuddingtonian Craft and Cars who supply quality used cars in Worcester Park. Thanks, guys, for all your support. It's been really uh, important uh, to continue to have that support, particularly as we've gone through uh, the the COVID situation. So this is Graham Jones. Join me next Tuesday here on Channel KT4, when my guest will be Jonathan Lees, the founder of managing director of Epsom and Yule Food Bank. Until then, stay safe and bye now. Mm -hmm.